That's 2023. You know what I mean? Kicking this thing off. You had a New Year's resolution? Uh, I do. I have plenty of, I wouldn't say plenty, but I think in this case, less is more mm. when we talk about New Year's resolutions. And it's, it will be incumbent upon me to make sure that not only do I have them, you have yours, but everybody else have theirs. So with all of that being said, man, we're going to talk a little bit about the New Year's resolutions. Yeah, yeah. New Year, new you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody has what they want to change in, in the New Year. And sometimes, bro, I ain't going to lie to you. I look at it and I'm like, all right, what's the major difference from what happened on that 365th day of the previous year and that first day of the next year? Like, what, what's really going to be different? Behind the mask. What up, my dog? What's good, family? Another day in paradise. You already know what it is. Yes, sir, man. Yes, it is. And we are now into the second week of the new year. Yeah, man. It's 2023. You know what I mean? Kicking this thing off. You got a New Year's resolution? Uh, I do. I have plenty of... I wouldn't say plenty, but I think in this case, less is more mm. when we talk about New Year's resolutions. And it's... It will be incumbent upon me to make sure that not only do I have them, you have yours, but everybody else have theirs. So, with all of that being said, man, we're going to talk a little bit about the New Year's resolutions. Yeah, yeah. New Year, new you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And everybody has what they want to change in, in the New Year. And sometimes, bro, I ain't going to lie to you. I look at it and I'm like, all right, what's the major difference from what happened on that 365th day of the previous year and that first day of the next year? Like, what, what's really going to be different? You know what I mean? 24 hours? You going to make a change, a drastic change in 24 hours? Or are you going to be the same old you after about a week or two? I never thought about it that way. I'm just saying. Keep it 100. No lies in the lounge, man. All right. So if we don't keep it 100... Some of the first, a few things that comes to mind when people say they want to have New Year's resolutions and uh, the number one is everybody goes to the gym mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. <laughs> yeah. That is an all-time high when it comes to like profits yeah, yeah. of all gyms. All gyms, yeah, yeah. Why? Because everybody wants to come in, feel better about themselves. You ate good all throughout the holidays and now it's time to get back sexy for the springtime. Yeah, man. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm guilty of it too, though, because I've done it. You know what I'm saying? You start off the new year, jump into the gym and everything, and fall off the bandwagon come February or March. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we can't fall off this year, man. Nah, we can't. Nah, 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 nah. Because March, April comes, it's dropping the top. Yeah. That means for all the dudes, you taking the shirt off. You ain't trying to be the only dude in the pool with the T-shirt on now. Yeah. Because you, know you don't I mean? want nobody looking at that gut. You can't be the biggest dude at the beach. Nah. This is not acceptable. Not Shamu. <laughs> not Shamu. Number two, I think the second thing is passion over income. Mm. And so what I mean by that is sometimes you just can't keep doing the same thing over and over, yeah. expecting a different result. Yeah. Insanity. Definition of insanity. So, with that being said, shout out to my boy Sean Phillips for giving me that nugget. SP, SP. SP. But my point is, is this. When you're more, when you do things from a passion standpoint, when you do things that you're passionate about, it's easier to be able to monetize off of it. Mm. Why? Because you're not burnt out from doing something that you don't want to do. And then, two, you truly enjoy it and you get some type of emotional gratification out of it. Yeah. I call it a, I call it an emotional check. Mm. And so once you do that, you give it time, you let it manifest, and you continue to curate that idea, then hopefully you can monetize off of it. Yeah. And that's like a simple key to living like a very, very happy life too. Yeah, man. And I think when I bring that back to the football world, 
It's almost like the new year in the football world, right? The beginning of the season. So back in the season, everybody's 0-0. All the teams have these lofty goals about making the Super Bowl or making the playoffs or winning their divisions, things like that. But you start to see the teams that do the same thing over and over again, expect different results, and end up with that insane record because they ain't in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? All the yeah. teams, the playoff seedings are set. You know what I'm saying? We know who's going where. Some of the usual suspects are still up there. Your, your Chiefs, you know what I'm saying? The Bengals now, the Bills and the AFC and then the NFC. You got the Eagles doing their thing. Obviously, your Niners, you know what I mean? Cowboys. So, But you have a few teams that we thought in the beginning of the year that were going to be a little bit better than they were. Yeah. They didn't work out that way, bro. You know what I mean? They really they, didn't, they, though. They did. They did. And, I, and I, for me, I think back to, remember the beginning of the season, everybody was so hyped on the AFC West. The four, four-headed four quarterbacks. I did, listen, I'll be the first one to say it. Remember that? I thought the AFC West was going to be the premier conference mm-hmm. or the premier division. Yeah. Yeah. In the NFL. I'll yeah. let you go ahead and take it yeah, from there. Yeah, I think we all did because you got your, you got Patrick Mahomes, obviously, you know what I'm saying, with the Chiefs, uh, Derek Carr, Raiders, yep. uh, Justin Herbert with the Chargers, and then you bring in Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Everybody's like, well, this division is going to be lights out. Russ so, about to cook. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Broncos country. Let's ride. <laughs> Something like that. And you, you thought, you know what? This division is going to be crazy competing for the playoffs. Not the case. And you look at the Broncos, bro. And what happened with Russell Wilson, again, for me, the team had these lofty goals. You thought they'd be better. Started off with the team owner. They hired Nathaniel Hackett to be the new head coach. Former Packers offensive coordinator was down there throwing the ball over the place with Aaron Rodgers doing their thing. You thought that marriage was perfect with their new quarterback, Russell Wilson. Signed him to that mega deal. Five-year, $262 plus million. 161 million guaranteed. Ooh. And you just think like, yo, this is the match made in heaven. Everybody yeah. thought the Broncos were going to do their thing. Moving forward, that was supposed to be the missing piece to get this team that had the great defense. Defense is top six in the NFL this year, total defense, to get them to the postseason, to really do some, make some noise. You know what I mean? But we saw what happened. You got rid of Melvin Gordon. You got rid of your head coach. You fired him after a 4-11 and start. During the middle of the season, bro. Hold on now. One year. Ha- this was Hackett's first. <laughs> first this was year. his first. I, unheard of. Never heard of that before. First year. Not, and not even a full, complete year. And Russell Wilson did not have the season that we expected. Thrown for the fewest TDs that he's had in his career. Also has the lowest QB rating of his career. So this is not the season that we wanted for Russell Wilson and the Broncos. And I think to myself, okay, you get rid of your, your, your head coach, right? Your quarterback that you paid all this money, you can't get rid of him because who's going to take on that contract right now? But I look at the Broncos. Their starting quarterbacks is Peyton Manning won Super Bowl 50. Let's run through them. Paxton Lynch, yep. right? A pass is prime, Joe Flacco. Case Keenum, Trevor Simeon, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, who did, did I, right, but just couldn't get him to the postseason. And now a pass is prime, Russell Wilson. You get rid of your head coach. You got a new quarterback in that nobody's going to take on now. Nobody's going to take on that contract. And you talk about a new year doing new things, but what's going to be different? What's the main thing that's going to be different? And the Broncos owner said the following. uh, Extensive conversations with general manager George Patton and our ownership group, we determined a new direction will be ultimately in the best interest of the Broncos. A new direction. Mind you, you just had a new direction last year when you hired a new head coach. <laughs> so what possibly is going to be the difference? Again, you're switching out these quarterbacks. To me, it looks like a franchise that can't get the proper quarterback in place, can't get the proper head coach in place. So what's different? Is it going to be the ownership? You selling? Hey, just, sold up. <laughs> just sold a couple years ago. They just so sold. They just sold. So what is going to be the difference, bro? A team that you really think had it all together, but... It's the same thing. Maybe you don't let Russell have his own office. Come on, bro. That, I, that, like, look, man, if that man's doing this thing, like a quarterback, his own office because he wants to be there all the time. I ain't mad did, at did we? Did we? Now, we, we didn't put on our track shoes when, it, when, it, when uh, practice was over, but we wasn't staying overnight. Yeah. Only time we stayed overnight was when we partied all night 
and we parked in the parking lot. Don't you dare talk <laughs> about that in the lounge. We parked because no there's lies no in the lies, lies in the lounge. No lies in the lounge. We parked in the parking lot because we wanted to wake up at five, six in the morning when the uh, trainers got there. To unlock, get, in the, get in the steam get room. Get in the steam room in the sauna room yeah. and go back to sleep before everybody else got there to be fresh and ready and not smell like a brewery. Am I lying? <laughs> Noted. <laughs> so what's going to be the difference, man? There, it's not going to be any difference. I think ultimately at the end of the day, you get rid of your head coach. Mm-hmm. To me, I, I'm, I'm still having problems with that because yeah. if you hired him, you, obviously you thought he was the guy. Yeah. Maybe you're wrong, but at least you made the move. Number two, you go out and you get a franchise quarterback, and I'll be the first one to tell you. I've always been on the Russell, let Russ cook train. Mm -hmm. And I'm still on that train to this day, period. But the reality of it is he's underperforming, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and you see it. It's a shame to see. I've been a part of teams to where you have great defenses, meaning they are championship ready. And the only thing that they are missing is just an offense Mm -hmm. or – just a quarterback to be able to continuously push them down the field to create points, yeah, yeah. to take the burden off of the defense. So that's why it's the greatest team game of all time. Yeah, And I think um, it's the greatest team game when you look at all of sport. Yeah, definitely. You know, in my, in my strong opinion. So, what, what team on your side, though, do you believe, you know what, in the beginning of the season, this is going to be one of the teams to compete in the postseason for the playoffs, maybe have a shot at making a Super Bowl run but came up short. You talk about a team that's making a Super Bowl run. I'm thinking a repeat team of making a Super Bowl run with the Los Angeles Rams. Mm. Look, bro, the continuity that they established from the previous year is totally all smucked up. (laughs) Like, before you get into who's hurt, who left, Mm. it reminds me of one of the greatest GMs of all time, Bill Polian. Mm. I have a lot of respect for him because the way that he's built and put together teams, not just teams who compete, but championship teams that not only go to the show, but they win the show with the Colts. You look at the Buffalo Bills and um, just his knowledge of being able to spread it down to other guys who come underneath him. But one of his most famous quotes is saying when a team thinks they're one player away, you're not. Mm -hmm. And that's trouble. And so when I look at the Los Angeles Rams, that's exactly what I see. They went out, got Matthew Stafford. Mm -hmm. Paid off big dividends last year. Yeah, for sure. But now he's not playing. He's hurt. They're going through a coaching carousel of quarterbacks. You look at Bryce Perkins. You look at John Walford. You look at now Baker Mayfield, Mm -hmm. who came in and has shown some life. Actually, I'm impressed with Baker Mayfield, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But my point is, going back to Bill Polian's statement is this. They gave up a lot to get Matthew Stafford, and they won the Super Bowl last year. But in order to change or to have a New Year's resolution, Mm -hmm. like, what are you going to do different? Usually that comes from within the draft by drafting new guys. These guys gave up so much to get Matthew Stafford. They got six years now of not having a first-round pick. Look at me. (laughs) Six years, bro. (laughs) We know how much we value those first-round picks. Why? Because that's instant credibility. That's instant production. And when you get guys who can walk in and play like that, now you can implement some other pieces around them, even if they ain't necessarily ready, Mm -hmm. some good veterans. And so that's where they're missing the mark on that because they're going to have to continue to build their team with free agents because Mm -hmm. they don't have any top picks coming up over the next five, six years. So that's one. Then you lose in free agency Von Miller. Mm -hmm. We know how much he brought to the table yeah. to that team throughout that playoff run. Pass rush and leadership. Pass rush, leadership, production, big dog. Facts. Production. Then Aaron Donald, he was hurt. 
high ankle sprain. Ashawn Robinson, one of the best run stuffers in the league. Both of those guys are hurt. Mm. So they lose pass rush ability, run stuffing ability, and guess who that puts a strain on? The secondary. Yeah. And so now, even though they still play pretty good defense, or they did this past year, they got to figure out a way to not only bring in other guys, but to bring in another credible pass rusher mm -hmm. who's going to strike fear. I know Leonard Floyd, shout out to Leonard Floyd, but he was hurt the majority of the year at times. So that's something that they're going to have to do, and I just think it's a big disappointment when you look at a team who actually won the yeah. Super Bowl a year ago, and now they got to go into the gift bag and say, what New Year's resolutions can I pull up now yeah. or pull out now? Got to start it from scratch, man. That's the crazy part of this league, bro. And you would think, do you think I should say that the Rams have like a Super Bowl hangover, though? That's the thing. You know what I mean? Because a lot of teams, they they win a Super Bowl, and what a Super Bowl hangover is is you, you stuck in the past off of that that Super Bowl win and thinking that your next season is going to be much of the same and then you crap your pants kind of like the Rams did this season. No, I, I think it's a lot of it is just due to they don't have any continuity. Yeah. Offensive line, several changes from that area. Mm -hmm. You look at Big Wit, he Tired. retired. Yeah. You look at OBJ, he's gone. Yeah. And I think if you look at the catalyst, uh, Cooper Cup was hurt. Yeah. yeah. Then you look at Robert Woods. He's not even there anymore. He's with Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought the plan that they had was built for those specific players. Yeah. And when you change the players, now it takes a minute to be able to, to find out as a coach, this guy ain't really necessarily as good as I thought he was with me asking him to do this. So now you have to go and rearrange and find chess pieces. I don't think it's a Super Bowl hangover. Mm -hmm. I truly believe they're just deficient in a lot of areas. Yeah, I feel you. Well, shoot, on the flip side of that, teams that not many people thought were going to do well, but shocked some people and actually did well. You know what, man? I got to represent right now. Represent then. A team that I grew up loving, had the brief opportunity to get a sip of coffee with. Very brief. How was that coffee, though, when you had Damn, it? Damn, it was good. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Going back home, playing for my New York football Giants. Very brief, but still played for them. I can say I'm in the record books as being a New York Giant. Bro, they shocked the world this year, man. Nobody really thought the Giants were going to come do their thing. We don't see what they don't do the in the playoffs. playoffs we don't see what they going to do in the playoffs. Hey, listen, man. It don't matter about that. You know why? Why? Because the first time in six years, the Giants have not only made the playoffs, First time in six years they had a winning record, bro. And we all know that the NFL is much better when the G-men are relevant. Say it ain't so, Spikes. He telling lies, Craig. No he lies telling lies. <laughs> no lies are the lies, man. G-men doing their thing, finally made the playoffs. And you know what? I asked my, my former teammate, Chris Canny, ESPN analyst, host of his own show, Canny and Carlin. Shout out to Canny. Shout out to CC. I asked him, I said, well, what was the one thing that made the Giants so different this season and the previous season? Because he also covers the Giants up there in New York. And one of the things he said is head coach Brian Dable has the team buying into that winning culture. You know what I'm saying? So not only that, you get back a healthy Saquon Barkley, first time healthy in a few years, rushed for over 1,300 yards on the ground, crown and pound like the G-men are used to doing, made the Pro Bowl again. And then you have... Hold up. Isn't this his payday? He's a free agent after this year. He is a free agent after this year. Ding, ding. You know 15. What I'm so, yeah, another Pro Bowl year. Oh, he's going to get the bag. Yeah, you damn right he's going to he get, gonna the, get bag. the bag. Oh, yeah. And I you know what? He that. was able to stay healthy. Yeah, that's the main thing. At the right time. So, that's the main thing. shout out to that, man. Yeah, man. We love when people get to ting that's right. paid. Factual, factual, man. And, and, and the company with that, head coach Brian Debo. He has played into the strengths of Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have Daniel Jones doing things outside of what he's capable of doing. Cut down on the turnovers. Only five interceptions on the year, bro. Compared to the previous year. Where he was doing 10, throwing 10, 11 I think he was accounted for close to 20 turnovers. Yeah, man. And he's doing, he's doing work as well. And when you look at a quarterback that has had a career year, 
in completion percentage, fewest turnovers in the league as a starting quarterback, and also QBR. I mean, that's what you want from your quarterback. Now, he's not going to sling it for 4,000, 5,000 yards like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady used to do, Drew Brees used to do. But what he's not doing is turning the ball over, giving the other defenses opportunities Mm -hmm. to get the ball back and get their defense tired. And again, you have a division with the Cowboys, both in the playoffs, the Eagles also in the playoffs. And down the stretch, you thought the Commanders might have had a shot to make the playoffs also. So that division, which went from worse as one of the worst divisions in the NFL, now turned out to be one of the better divisions in the NFL. And Daniel Jones did just enough to make sure that he kept his offense on the field long enough, along with Saquon Barkley, to actually make this team relevant again. Defense wasn't playing the best throughout the season, but they did enough to get this team in the playoffs. As Spice, you know like I know, any team, once you're in the playoffs, fair game, baby. So I'm going with the G men. You know what I'm saying? I know I picked the Eagles. That's what I'm about going, to say. I know I picked How the you Eagles. Won't, you listen, won't stay listen, in the listen, same listen, division listen, listen, listen. and you picking two teams. Listen, listen. My heart is with the G men. My media trained mind <laughs> is with the Eagles. So, you know, I could I could do what I could do. You know what I mean? Okay. I see why they gave you only one cup of coffee <laughs> your time with the New York Giants. Nah, man. I think, but that's dope, bro. That's the type of change you want to see, man. That's the type of change you want to see from year to year. You want a, a head coach that's actually going to play to the strengths of his quarterback, to the strength of his team. And that's what Brian Dable has done, bro. And I'm here for it, man. I, I, I think you, could, you also can speak to this, but Brian Dable, he was the offensive coordinator that came from the Buffalo Bills. Right. Super quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. So he was responsible for putting together the game plans and really highlighting the talent. And so when I look at that across the league, as much as we want to give coaches the credibility off top to say, you know what, this guy can do that, or we operate up under the assumption that they will do that, everybody can't do it. They just can't. Not that they don't want to, they just can't. But I'm going to give you a coach who is doing it in another city. Who's that? Duval. <laughs> How about them Duval. Jacksonville Jaguars? Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. out to Doug Peterson, man. Yeah, 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 most definitely. Quarterback most definitely. background. Most definitely. Really learned the system and perfected the system up under Andy Reid mm-hmm. for so many years. But you look at what he was he's been able to do with Trevor Lawrence, number one pick from two years ago. And listen, he came into a situation to where, and he repeatedly said this, people told me all the time when I was drafted to the Jaguars, you're not going to win. Like, hell will freeze over. That's me saying that. I said that part. (laughs) Damn, bro. Like, before they win. And now look what they've been able to do since they made the playoffs. They've been trash over the past few years. Yeah. Doug Peterson combined with Trevor Lawrence, and one of the things that he really implemented was, Trev, let's sit down. Let me see how you see the game. Tell me some of the things that you like. Tell me some of the plays that you don't like. Mm-hmm. Another thing Doug Peterson did was being able just to see him from earlier in the year OTAs, spring practice, seeing his ability, seeing some of the things from a mobility standpoint and then from a acumen standpoint of understanding how well he can absorb new information and be able to not only process it, but to be able to have it implemented as an extension of a coach on the field. And so with him being able to do that, understanding that, Trevor Lawrence, has had t- he's taken off. Yeah, yeah, definitely doing this thing. We had Fred Taylor on. Remember Fred T back in the day said that uh, Trevor Lawrence is everything that he's supposed to be when you think of a franchise quarterback. And like you said, man, he's showing that right now, bro. And to sum it up, what he's done differently for his New Year's resolution, let's jump right into it. The true measure of a quarterback is not how well he can throw the ball, mm-hmm. but how well he can elevate the play of others that's around him. Right. And that's exactly what he's done. 
Number two, the mental capacity of just being mentally strong. People telling him what he can't do or what they haven't done before he arrived. He compartmentalized all of that and went out. Over this, at the end of this past season, he's led his team to multiple comeback victories. Even though defensively now, this team was known to be good, even throughout the time when you were playing. Yeah. Always had studs. But top 25 defense, Trevor Lawrence has now brought the offense back to a top 10 offense that scores points. And at any time they were in a deficit this season, throughout the comeback wins, they found ways to win the game. Yeah. Whether or not if he's throwing down deep, managing the game, or making the right decisions with clock management and understanding what audibles to check off with. I was very impressed with him on that. And I think the last thing that I'm impressed with is when you come into a situation to where a team hasn't won in so many years. Yeah. Like, it's bad juju. Like, everything is bad. Facts. From... You have a complaint about everything, from the coffee not tasting well, from you going in the stall and you getting ready to take a dump, the, the, the tissue, the people who are responsible for putting tissue in there, they ain't restocking it on time. Everything is a problem. Yeah. But the thing that I appreciate about him is they as a whole, meaning Doug Peterson, even the GM Trent Baalke, mm. they made sure to reinstall the confidence around the building. Yeah. with the little things. You talk about from coffee, food, making sure everybody is prepared. And it's just the little things as if when you wake up in the morning, it's just certain things that are constant that you know that's going to be there and that's going to be put there properly. Yeah. That's what they've been able to do to change the mindset, to change the perspective of not only how they see themselves, but how they see themselves as a team collectively moving forward. So excited to see what they're going to do next year when the 2023 season rolls around. Yeah, man. And talk about the history of the Jaguars. I want to say maybe made the playoffs once since I've been there. And I was in, uh, I was there in 08. You know what I'm saying? So when I look at that team and, and you're talking about things being consistent, players going into the facility, knowing what to expect, and that culture feeling better. Once they had that with Urban Meyer, the shit they had with Urban Meyer. Oh, that was bad. There was only one way you can go. <laughs> That's up. You know what I'm saying? If you have a franchise type quarterback like a Trevor Lawrence, you have to equip him with every possible asset to help him win. From the coaching, from your running game, from your offensive line, a solid defense. You know what I'm saying? I think the Jaguars have finally did that. Hopefully they turn in the page, man, like like you said. So, again, but that goes back to what we said in the beginning. What's that resolution? What's going to be different? Are you going to be the same old you, or is it really going to be a new year, new you? That's well, what I want to see, bro. Don't well, don't feel me. Don't blow smoke up my, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't need none of that. You know what I'm saying? We got 24 hours to figure it out to make it. It's a choice. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you got to have other pieces in place too, yeah. <clears throat> Denver Broncos. But right. we ain't talking about that. <laughs> what you going to do, man? I think my resolution, bro, I always say it, but I really want to stick to it. Positivity or nothing. You know what I mean? And that's that's my thing. I really want to make sure I, I, I don't complain about things that I can't change. And if I feel like there's something I want to complain about, seek a solution to try to change it. Yeah. Do my best to change it, I should say. But standing in that positive mindset, man. We all go through ups and downs, and it's no different for football. You know what I mean? We we have times that you've had seasons that weren't as successful, but you've had seasons that you also were on some of the best defenses in the league and and had all pro seasons. I've had seasons where wasn't successful, didn't play as much, seasons that we made it to the Super Bowl. So you're going to go through ups and downs, but having that positive mindset and striving for better, I think that's what we can do. Yeah. But uh, – these teams too, bro. It ain't but a certain amount of slots to make it to the playoffs, Jack. <laughs> you got to figure something out. Got to figure something out so you're not in the same position. That's right. Next year, as you are in right now, meaning this year. Indeed, indeed. So, cheers to the resolution. Salute. Behind the mask.